Here we are, Lawn Hill. We've been waiting for this moment yeah. for a while. We've been really wanting to get up to this little piece of paradise and check out this little oasis country. We've been hanging out up here in the Gulf country for the last couple of weeks. We've got a few things we want to tick off in here, some boating, some fishing, some hiking. I'm stoked to be here with the family. This is actually the first time Dave has brought the family along for a caravan trip and the boys have been really good in the car so far. It's been a long drive and lots of Ks, but we've been loving being in the van and finally getting to use one. So yeah, we're really excited to check out the area now. At last, let's go hit it. Dell's Grove. It is hot. Far north of Queensland. Feel heat. summer coming back. There's plenty of corros, there's plenty of dust. We've got the tyre pressures down. I need to get up on top of them, otherwise, this is going to be a rough 12 days. How's that corrugation? We've probably spent a good 700 k's coming across the Savannah Way in the last couple of days and uh, there's no doubt that this Lawn Hill section of it, it has been the worst. If you are coming up here, make sure that you uh, spend your time, lower your tyre pressures, make sure everything's boxed up in your van. Latch your fridge. Latch your fridge. That one seems to get us a little bit. Bujamula National Park, Don Man. Bujamula. Here we go, here's the front gates. This is stunning. Reckon we're going to see some barra in the water up here, mate. Catch a barra for dinner. Cook it over the fire. No crocodiles. There's a few crocs. I don't want to swim with the crocs. You were swimming with the crocs the other Barren's day. Barren's basically crocodile bait. Barren's all right. It's like the size of a No, 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 no. The crocodiles won't touch any of us. We'll be right. Well, we've made it up to the middle gorge at Bujamala National Park. It's probably about a 15 minute drive up from Adele's Grove. So in this area here, you could either choose the option of hiring a canoe or jumping in this awesome little electric party pontoon boat as Donnie's calling it. So basically we're gonna go for a nice little venture up here for the next couple of hours and check out this awesome gorge. see up here mate I've, I've seen the you know the main picturesque shot that's I'm guessing is at the end of this gorge we've got a lot of a uh, couple of freshwater crocodiles that we'll see up through there a fair amount of fish species that are very inquisitive there are archer fish up here so the kids will be able to play with those you reckon we might see a barra from the boat mate there are barra in here a couple of weeks ago down and further down the road towards the Dells Grove there we did catch a one meter and four centimeter barra out of there oh mate it hasn't uh Hasn't let down yet. This place is amazing. Anywhere with fresh water with beautiful pandanus lining the, the edges, it's just uh, it's it, is, it is stunning, isn't it? Yeah. We've only been here for a few months, and I've forgotten there's the rest of the world actually going on out there. So everyone that comes around here, pretty much their jaw drops every time they see it. A little crocodile on the bank here. Probably about a metre and a half long, having a little sleep on the shore. Awesome little creatures. Here it is. This is that dream little picturesque shot that I've been looking at all these photos. I don't think there's anywhere else in the country or the world that's got a set up like this with these tiered layers of water. Big gorge. Huge gorge. Off. Pandanus lining all of the banks. Yeah. I guess the real truth of it is 100 metres that way is red desert. Dirt. Yeah, it's strange. You're driving through all that dry, corrugated road, and then all of a sudden there's this huge waterhole. Mom, are they going? We're going to go for a swim. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Under the waterfalls? No, no, I don't think so. I just touch my feet on that. Day. I think okay. it's a good tip. Just do a feet dip. Yeah. 
I think we're going to have to come back up, do the 1500 metre walk and come for a swim. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Tuck it out. That was the most awesome gorge I have hands down seen in Australia. No argument. That place is amazing. That is some of the best scenery I've ever seen in my life. Where, where's this place to stay? Well, there's a mate of mine, Rob, who uh, works out on the Lawn Hill Station. Um, so we've, we've got a bit of a secret spot out there that we've, uh, we're allowed to go and check out. Is there water there? I believe we're going to be on a picturesque little water hole. Oh, it's just so hot, I need to go for a swim. Alright, let's get up for a swim. Well, this little mud map that Rob's given us looks like it's coming up with the goods. What do yeah, you reckon about this? No one else is here, we've got the place to ourselves. So I just want to reiterate to everyone, it's one of our buddies who uh, works on a station up here has let us uh, in on a little secret. So we've just followed a little mud map. We're rolling into this little spot, which is obviously uh, on this beautiful little river here. And it is. Oh, wow. oh it's, it's amazing. So anyway, let's set up camp here and uh, I think we'll have a day of fun tomorrow. We've found the most epic little spot. We're on a little stretch of this creek. It's probably about five, six metres wide. We've backed down. We're, you know, a couple of metres away from the creek. So I'm just going to unhook here and do a quick little setup. Pretty close to being all set up here. I couldn't be happier with this little spot we've jagged here. So uh, I'm in a bit of a rush to get set up, see if we can go jag a fish for dinner. I've caught a couple of little fish while we've been up in the Gulf so far, but I can feel my barra coming on. It's gonna happen. I'm going to catch a fish too, Dad. You're gonna catch a fish? Yeah, I'm going to swim right now. Mate, well, what the plan's gonna be here, it's late, we've got dinner coming. Don't let's just let's just you've you've you've, you've chosen your favourite little popper. Yeah. Let's just have a few flicks up and down this creek, mate, and see what happens. I'm gonna put that on and I'll catch some fish. Okay. Come on. I reckon this little pink popper might be the one. What do you reckon? Got up early and young Baron was having a bit of a rough morning, so I strapped him to me and come for a wander up this creek. This is part of the creek system that runs down from the main big gorge system and it sort of runs along in decent lots of the creek and then gets fouled up and you get these little bits of running water and then it opens back up again. So just gonna try and flick a little lure in underneath this and see what we get. Big one. Oh, it's a bit bigger. 
about three casts just in underneath this little running water here and straight on to another just sooty. This is Gulf Country fishing. Beautiful little sooty. Thought this lure was probably some nice little bit of fly or something dropping in off a spider web and he's a nice little fish but I think I'm gonna run with the confidence that I might get a few more today so I'll let this feral back and see if we can get a barrow I think. Dave's bigger catching one fish is a successful day so from here on in I'm having a good day but I'm gonna go do a little cook up to the gremlins and uh, see what today brings. This is the bigger baked beans. Little fella absolutely loves it. Pretty simple really. Cut up some mushies, some bacon or some ham. Cut up a bit of green stuff. Couple of tins of baked beans. We're gonna cook all that up on the tembo tusk. This little tembo tusk for cooking is great. It's taken a little bit to get used to. Heaps of heat in the middle and then it sort of cools off. But the reality is you can cook a bunch of stuff, push it out to the outside, keeps it warm, and I'll be dumping my eggs in the middle, let them cook up, and then I'll be ready to serve up. I'm gonna eat all of my veggie, Dad. You ready to eat, mate? Yeah. Let's go do it. So you seemed a little bit surprised about the fact that I caught a fish this morning. Dave, I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, you'll just have to wait until you see the movie because uh, I definitely caught a fish. Why didn't you keep it? Because I'm pretty confident I'm going to catch another one today. Okay, do you reckon Daddy's going to fish, catch a fish, Don? No, 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 I'm going to do our bombs kill. Oh, you're going to get one? Oh, you're going to need one. Perfect. reckon about this river, Nice. Oh, it's magic. I just really can't believe how tranquil this river is. Like, I've, I've been up a few estuaries in my time, but this has almost got to take the cake, doesn't it? Yeah, we have it all to ourselves. With the human around. We love going up the Noosa River every Sunday, but I reckon this is, uh, this is pretty special. You reckon we'll be back up here next winter? Oh, I already want to come back. Johnny says this is his favourite place in the world. Hey, you know what? I saw a pretty good rope swing back there. Do you want to go back and go for a little dip? You want to go for a swim, Donny? Um, no. No? Why not? You're scared of the crocs? Come on, let's go put our board shorts on and have a swing on that rope swing. Right, hey guys, who's having a go on this rope swing? That's all you, Dave. Yeah? You go and have a go first. You want to have a go, uh, Donnie? No, you go and have All right, let's go and have a go. This is one of the better rope swings I've ever seen around, and uh, it doesn't get into a much better creek than this. I've got mixed feelings about you going in there, Dave. Where are you going to land? What if there's a big tree trunk right under the water? Under the water! So we are going to have some lunch now. Donnie's favourite lunch is sushi and sushi is actually really good for on the road because the seaweed wraps have a really long shelf life and so does rice. So as long as you've got some frozen meat that you can defrost, a little bit of veg, we like to use cucumber and avo, it's um, really easy to whip up so I'll show you in the kitchen. Doing salmon sushi and so I'm half Filipino so I brought my rice cooker because this is just an essential. <laughs> and I can plug it in in the van and cook perfect rice. Um, so that is a huge game changer for me. Okay, so I'm quickly gonna put the rice on first so that can cook while we do everything else. Then I'm gonna chop the veggies. Then I'm going to get the salmon out, soak it in vinegar to get rid of any fishy smell. And then I'm going to cook it. By that point, the rice will be ready. I've also got a gas stove top. So this is just like what I have at home. It just feels normal. So the rice is finished cooking, so now we just have to assemble and roll. It's actually a really good one to have while you're camping because 
rice is a long shelf life item and same with our seaweed wrap and I'm gonna check in some capsicum and cucumber. And so I've lost my mind. I thought I brought my bamboo sushi rolling mat and it's nowhere to be found so I've obviously forgot it. So we've had to improvise because we're in pretty much in the middle of nowhere. So I've used a piece of plastic and it's, it's worked just as well. And I forgot to mention the best part about cooking in the zone is we, wherever we pull up, there's always an awesome view out the window. So I get to cook, watch Donnie and Baron play and take in the awesome view. For me, boating's been a pretty big part of my life. Grew up competitive sailing, obviously got into boat building when I left school. So I've been trying to think about how I can get a boat away on all these adventures so I can sneak up all these awesome little creeks we go and sit generally on the side of. A big tinny on the roof of my car isn't an option for me. I really don't want to lug something like that round. This thing here, the hull weighs 32 kilos. I've got a nine kilo electric motor on the back, which means I'm not taking any petrol fuel around or have any of that leaking through the back of my canopy or toolboxes. I've got a 125 amp hour lithium Enerdrive battery, which comes straight out of the back of my canopy, so I'm not doubling up. It's an awesome little thing. It fits under the bed in the caravan. It's a massive thumbs up from me, and I won't be leaving for another adventure without it. So I've been out on the river with the family. No fish again. I know a bit of an expert up here by the name of Rodney. I'm gonna motor up the river and see if I can find him and see if he can help me get one. How you going, Rodney? How are you getting there, mate? How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. I've heard you're the man around here that knows how to catch a decent barra. Oh, catch, yeah, but whether we can do it today is another story. Right, eh? Oh. How about you jump on, mate? I'll, uh, come on over here and we'll see what can happen. I reckon this is Dave Bigger's best opportunity he's ever going to have at getting a barra. Oh, yeah. Full go. rabbit, let's go. <laughs> Cheeky little freshwater croc over yeah, there, mate, sitting on that log. Hey, he's always after your tucker, isn't he? Have you had one of those crocs take your fish yet? Nah, 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 thank God. Oh, hey, uh, too big, mate. Too big. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, what, what in this particular waterway here, um, where, where are we sort of heading and, and what are we looking for? Yeah, so in, uh, in Lawn Hill Creek here, and that, my, my biggest experience is this sort of stuff, all right? Barra love pandanus around here. This is my lucky place up here, so I'm willing to share that with you. <laughs> I heard you recently caught an absolute monster up here. Uh, How big was it and where exactly was it? So that went 104 centimetres. So finally cracked the magic metre in the wild. And, Unreal, uh, mate. So uh, trust me, if we get one, you're gonna know about it. <laughs> we'll give this little boat a test to see what it can handle. <laughs> I reckon we could fit a meter in the in the middle of this thing oh, here, mate. I'll kick you overboard to fit it in. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'll kick you overboard. <laughs> that was something that chopped at your first cast, wasn't it? Yeah. Up in here, that was a good little spot for sooties and toga early in the year. And the toga you normally find up here are fairly territorial. So once you release them, they'll. Uh, a couple of weeks later, go back, and yeah, hopefully we'll catch another one. Or we'll catch the same one again. So mate, we're about 20 casts in. Seen one little one little, yeah, one oh. little boil, mate. What are we? Uh... We've only got about 980 casts to go. <laughs> if you, uh, the normal way to catch barramundi, but uh, yeah, no. As I say, like I said, you know, it is a, it is a hit and miss. But um, like I said, this being a very, very visual sort of a place, it, uh, you know, they uh, they can spook quite easily sometimes. 
I forgot to tell you at the start of this, mate. I'm a yeah. fairly impatient person, but you oh, know. well, me and you'll get on because yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, sometimes my patience level for fishing nowadays is uh, starts to wane a little bit. <laughs> and that's where the big fella was. Hopefully, was it? Hopefully, his mate's back. <laughs> you back on the popper or? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I I use the old theory, big bait, big fish. Um, but the, the bait cast is normally preferred barra catching tool. Uh, it gives you a little bit more, a little bit more line pull, a little bit more direct. See, all in all, it's 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 just depends on what lure, what presentation. So you know, obviously, if you throw a soft plastic, you're normally going to throw it on spin. Yep. But if you've got a lure with a bit of weight behind it, normally a, a bait cast is a little bit more of a preferred uh, method. What do you reckon about my little barramundi buggy we're in here, mate? Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm actually pretty bloody impressed with it. There's uh, not too many uh, floating craft I've been this size that you can actually stand two half decent sized blokes in. Now I've actually lost a few kilos, in case you, in case you're wondering. But uh, yeah, no, it's um, mate, what an awesome little platform for doing this sort of work. Mate, I'm not sure whether you know, but I'm into building lightweight caravans and touring the country with lightweight gear. So this thing weighs 34 kilos, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> it's got the thumbs up from me, I can tell you. One thing to be better would be a, be a barrel, wouldn't it? But beggars can't be choosers. Pretty happy here flicking a line, mate, just daydreaming. Yeah. I've had a big day with the one-year-old and the three-year-old, mate. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm, I'm happy to be up here flicking lures with you. <laughs> I was about to say, it's getting close to dinner time, isn't it? She's taking care of it. <laughs> My poor wife's back there cooking with the boys. Ah. Oh. oh, then again, mate, I bet you she wouldn't swap it for the world. <laughs> she might. Oh, well, mate. The old Adele's Grove. Barra is going to live for another day. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, uh, I suppose it's only my name on the on the trophy at the moment. So. I'll let you keep that one, buddy. Yeah, oh, mate. You, yeah, you're such a gentleman for doing that. Well, but, you know, I might get back here tomorrow and have another hit. Oh, well done, buddy. Mate, it's been fun. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, let's get rabbit speed going and get out of here. Full rabbit. <laughs> back to the barbecue. <laughs> up early this morning, <clears throat> still licking my wounds a little bit from no barra last night, but I think I'll get over that one. We've got a big day planned today. We're up to the upper gorge for a swim. It's shaping up to be another beautiful day. to Indari Falls. We're going to take the chicken track because these two have pretty well broken my shoulders. <laughs> you ready for a swim? Yeah, let's do it. The boys are strapped on. Let's go. Bye. So we made it up to Indari Falls. We did come up here in the boat a couple of days ago, but we didn't get a chance to get in. Enough talking, let's get in. Right up. Absolutely amazing. I don't think you could find a better water hole around. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a great spot. How hot is it today? 39. Ooh. Hot. I just can't get over the setup of that oasis there. 
It's uh, yeah, it's literally no way. Like how would the first people that would have come along and discovered that place, they've stumbled across the hill the, and looks, looked down on that. It looks man-made, it's, it's that perfect. How's these mountain ranges right here? I've never seen landscape like this, it's so beautiful. It's just so unique, it's nothing but rock and then those big spinifex grasses and trees. Red dirt, red rock. Well, as we thought when we were coming in here, we were sort of wondering why it was called Lawn Hill, but the mountains are fairly well covered, so the Europeans obviously thought it looked like Lawn and named them the Lawn Hill. But it's actually Bunjamala. Bunjamala, the real name. And these cows out here. I've definitely uh, hit a few roos in my life unfortunately but I've spoken to a few truck drivers over my time and I, I know for a fact there's one thing you don't want to hit and that's a cow so we're obviously a week or two into uh, our trip away at the moment but I think we had our little uh, moment this morning when we really realized how important it is when you're on these not so good roads with plenty of corrugations, plenty of dips, plenty of cattle grids, that unless you want your day ruined or even a trip ruined, you really got to get on top of your checks before you get in the van and start driving. You know, going down these rough roads and opening a main entrance door and realising that we didn't quite shut a window properly, i.e. every latch, or we didn't quite shut the kitchen pantry latch properly fridge latch or i know we haven't done it but we've had a few of our customers that have done it they drive out of camp without adjusting their airbags and they'll go and do 100 k's down an extremely rough road Oy, pull her up Dave. chatting away and not see a big dip coming yeah people driving out of camp had a few too many reds the night before drive straight out of camp on the bump stops that is a guaranteed way to absolutely ruin a caravan uh, really? th thankfully we haven't done that will you imagine taking the springs out of this car right now and driving down this road I doubt, yeah. you, I doubt you'd have teeth in 100 k's they'd be gone for me this is the first time we've been properly caravanning as a yeah this is new ground as a team, I'm normally away with uh, the Zone Boys or whichever team I'm going away with. So, I must say, you're the favourite team I've been travelling with. Oh, thanks, man. So How is this? Wow, eh? Wish I could sort of stop and get a nice soft broom out and give the car a good clean. Tony just says he wants to go and swim in there. I do too, Donnie. Oh, it's such a pain in the water, too. How do they make the water up here so clear? See any crocs, Donnie? Oh! Hey! That's a good clean for the car. <laughs> to make fish curry tonight and the main ingredient was fish and Dave's job was to catch it and apparently he did but let it go and I don't know why he let it go but luckily I have some snapper from our last shop defrosted it today and we're going to make fish curry and I'll show you this isn't going to take long we're going to do it in the camp oven and put it over the fire coals the thing about fish curries is, is you can pretty much put whatever veggie you've, you want so whatever 
you have in the fridge can go straight into the curry. We've chopped the fish, the veggies are ready. We just have to get it on top of the coals now. Okay, let's put that there and let that bubble away. So this looks like it's got a fair bit of heat in there now. So I'm just gonna add the fish. Fish? Yeah, and then a little bit more curry powder because it needs to look yellow and right now it's not quite yellow enough. Okay, so you don't want to leave the fish in for too long because it cooks really quick and you don't want it to be like hard and chewy. So I'm just no. going to have to keep a close eye on that. I'm going to leave that for a minute, put the lid back on. Okay, do you know what this is, Donnie? Um, fish colour with lots of, lots of veggies in it. That's right. Do you like mum's fish curry? Yeah. I like mum's, I like you cooking. Thanks, Donnie. I love cooking for you. Mum, I love camping so much. You love camping? Yeah. That's awesome. So do we. That's why we do it, hey? Yeah. Okay, so this is looking pretty much ready. So just give that one more stir. Let it sit for another second. We've got some rice in my rice cooker in the bin and um, we're going to plate it up. So I've just plated it up. We're going to add some extra cracked pepper for good measure. And if you like coriander, a little bit of coriander on top. It divides the people, so don't add it if you don't like it. And we're done. Absolutely beautiful, you've nailed that. Mm. I think that um, we obviously don't eat over the fire all the time, but that is beautifully cooked fish. It's really tender. Yeah, this is the first time doing this fish curry at the camp oven. Mm. It's come out really well. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Nailed it. What do you reckon, Donnie? Mm. Pretty good, isn't it? Find your piece of fish. Mm. I reckon a few fear lime makes a curry sometimes. Can you taste that? Yeah. It's come to be really nice. This trip through Bunjamoa has been absolutely amazing. We've jammed a few things into three days. We haven't done huge amounts of kilometres, but not that we really want to with the boys with us. We've jumped around to a few little pockets. We've seen these absolute little pieces of paradise up and down the gorge in this creek. We've got our own little private getaway that we had about 10 k's up the river. This place is great. I'd highly recommend it to anybody to come up here and have a look. So we're about to go and have a little bit more of a look through this beautiful golf country. So we'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs>